Hi everybody, let's get started. Uh, today we are gonna try to focus on uh, poses that are good for back pains. Actually like good for back pain, I mean, you know, it will help alleviate the pain. Um, all of us, you know, have more or less some form of back pain. So let's, uh, it will focus on a holistic practice to get rid of that. We'll start in a standing pose as usual. Uh, legs little apart in hip distance. Since you know we are gonna focus on our back, we will do a deep back bend. So we can do it in multiple turns. First time you can just come to a gentle back bend and look up to the sky. There's something, uh, some tricks to do the back bend. Firm your hips up. I mean, if you're face to face, you could see I can actually like compress my hip muscle if I want. All right, we'll do it one more time. You can stay in gentle back bend or touch the back of your thigh or you can go as far as touching your touching the back of your shin or calf muscle right all right so let's get started whatever your level is if you're a beginner you can just stay here but what is important open your chest up so instead of um, like you know just like hanging in there it's an active pose so opening your chest up your collarbone shining your uh, uh, if you uh, if you are like a doll you you can think about um, like a tie on your chest and you're hanging by your chest so that is the type of opening I'm looking for as if you're hung by your chest <laughs> it sounds very gruesome but I think it makes sense so you can stay here right if you want to go further do not touch the back of your knee touch the back of your thighs and stay here if this feels like you know something you're comfortable maybe you can go farther down and touch the back of your shin come back very gently you don't want to snap out of these positions one last time gentle back bend Let's add side stretches already. So for side stretch. So stretch your left. Stretch your right. Stretch your full body. Surprisingly, you know, most yoga poses, they have more than one benefit. So you'll see that there are overlaps. Even though say I'm saying I'm working on my hips or back. All right. So now let's come to a forward fold. Leading with your chest. Let your torso hang. Um, let your belly touch your thigh. And forward fold. This feels good. Touch the ground with your hands. Step your left leg back. Step your right leg back. You're in plank pose. Either do knees, chest, chin or chaturanga. Chaturanga. And up dog. So you can do up dog or cobra or sphinx, wherever you want to be. But this is actually a pose we want to concentrate on. Anytime like you're doing the reverse posture of what you usually do. Imagine when you sit, you have like the opposite posture, right? Where you're almost like caving into your laptop or computer, whatever you're working on. So when you're like doing an opposite pose, where you're opening up your chest and your back is doing an opposite motion of what it's used to, you neutralize the damage slowly but surely. So that's why we're holding it for a little bit and then come to puppy pose. Puppy pose is also good for our back. 
if you want to get a deeper stretch in puppy pose um, if you have the opening again everything is optional in your so if you have the opening try touching your chest and then your chin will be on the ground so this is good for opening your heart and also for your back and you can just stay here and not care about opening your heart. So we are in puppy pose. Open your one side, in my case it's right side, and thread the needle. Come back to center. Open your left side. And then thread the needle. Come to all four. Cat cow. Cat cow is one of my favorite. This is like one pose, which you know, if you're pregnant, it's good for you. If you have back pain, it's good for you. It's good for numerous things. So let's come to cat cow, breathe in. Cat, look how my um, waist is like rising up, right? And still hold it tight. Uh, your head is, I'm trying to just explain, like you hollow out basically as much as you can, making the Longest line, if you are to draw a line from your arm covering your uh, waist to leg. And then cow. Shine your collarbone, have your hips up. Breathe in. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, all right, let's rise our leg as if you're going to kick the sky, one, two, three, four, Five. Other side. Well, this is not particularly for back. It's just we are in a pose. And three, four, five. And we are just adding some variety. Come to child's pose. Bring yourself back to the mat. Um, I am in my period and usually if you have period you don't do poses that are too strenuous on your belly but uh, today is not my first day so I'm feeling good about my cramps so I'll take it a little easy on the poses that are on my belly but I'll instruct you guys to you know uh, what are the full options and I might get to it let's see how I feel so yeah first come to a cobra pose and then come to baby cobra and raise your arms in baby cobra. So this is baby cobra, just a little bit of lift and then have your arms by your side like this. So you're having a lift without using your arms. So this engages your back. Now let's come to full expression with our arms straight. You can also have your arms not straight, like Sphinx, that's fine, or your arms straight, both are acceptable. Come back. If you have enough space in front of you, have your arms extended and lift up. Have your legs lift up as well. 
So we're in a Superman pose or Salavasana. Always breathe. One, one thing you have to do in yoga, actively breathe. Breathe in and breathe out. Very nice. Come down, rest your cheek. Now lift up. We will we can repeat Salavasana or hold your legs with your hand and lift up. This is a little strenuous on my belly, so I'm not gonna rock or anything. Just stay here for me. But you guys can rock back and forth, side to side also. Come down, rest on one of your other cheek. Now let's go to some more back bends. So for back bends, we'll go to Ustrasana or camel pose. So here we are on our knees. Put your hands on your lower back and come to a nice gentle back bend. Again, the same thing I mentioned in the beginning, as if there is a string tied to your chest, it's like pulling you out. That's how much open your chest need to be. And touching the bottom of your heel. This is nice. Come back. We'll do some more variation of the same pose. So feel free to just stay here. I'll show you guys some more variation. One of the variation is um, when I touch my heel, I'll actually go opposite heel. So if my right, right hand is back, I'm touching my left. I'm gonna try to rotate or like shift my chest to just be open towards the sky. And then the back bend. Gently come up. Now the same back bend on the other side. So use this arm and then, uh, did I do it already? Which side did I do? Yeah, I think I did this one. So I'm going to do the other side and add a back <coughs> Gently come out. Now we're going to take it again for all of this. Feel free to just stay here. It's, it has really the same benefit. So if you want to try some more variation. You are in back bend, but then you can try coming down. And then go back the same way. All right, these are some variation that we could try. Again, we are focusing on back bend. So I'm gonna show you guys how to get to wheel pose. So I think wheel pose a lot of us can do. It's one pose, you know, growing up, we would like do it as something fun to show off. So for wheel pose, I'll also maybe, let's see, I'll try to do some variation of wheel as well. But let's see first for wheel pose, have your legs folded, fold your knees, 
and then from here what will we do we will set our arms up uh, to be able to come to wheel okay so once your arm arms are set up then you try to be on your head first so lift your hips so you're really on a bridge except your arms are in a different position and then can you lift it up further to be on top of your head so you can just stop here if you can have this can you use your hand to elevate gently come down one more time actually I'm feeling a little funny so you guys do one more time uh, I think too much pressure on my belly so I'm gonna just hold a figure four uh, this is also like you know if any time you don't feel something is right for your body back off like do something else that feels right so I'm just gonna do something that I find relaxing hold a figure four and press my leg I do it on the opposite side <sighs> very tired today but that's why we are at the yoga mat almost takes my tiredness away almost all right so some more poses that could be good for our lower back is halasana so for halasana lift your leg up and then go back gently you can get some support from your arms and let your leg fall Gently come out and bring yourself to happy baby. Um, I don't have actually enough space, so I'm gonna move out a little. So yeah, we are not actually closing our practice, but happy baby is just good for our back. If you rock, it massages our um, back if you think it looks super weird happy baby pose it does look weird if there is a very uh, I would say not sophisticated joke about it I was practicing happy baby uh, a friend of mine made a comment like this happy baby pose looks so funny I'm not sure if it's happy baby or you're trying to birth something <laughs> But anyway, let's keep those emotions aside. Um, just rock in this pose so your back gets some massage. So you're going back and forth, right? That will give your back a very nice massage. Don't do it with momentum. Do it gently to get a good massage to your back. If you have a masseuse, you might even feel better. But in absence of that, you know, this feels pretty good. Should I have a, I'll, next time I'll show you guys some poses with tennis ball for back. You can get really good massage for your back with tennis ball. All right. So we did that. Have one leg extended and then other leg um, open up to the side. It's not particularly for back, but since we are in a position of happy baby. So this is half happy baby. So we are in half happy baby, trying to get that opening in our hip. Nice. 
and ex extended. Now happy baby on the other side, half happy baby. Nice. Come to a seated position. We'll do staff pose, which is also very good for back. So for staff pose, first sit straight, torso straight, and then leading with your chest, lean forward on your extended legs. Again, depending on your uh, flexibility or where in practice you are, your staff pose could just be here and that's really good. You can go farther also. If that's what your body allows, listen to your body and back off when it doesn't feel right. Nice. We'll do some more forward folds. Actually, let's do Marichi Asana. So one leg folded. And then bind around this leg. If you can't go all the way, just touch your uh, tights or shorts or whatever you're wearing. And then fold forward. Come on. Now the other leg extended. Marichyasara. So bind. And leading with your chest. Forward fold. Come back up. Come to Sarvangasana by coming to an open leg position. And then forward fold, right? You can stop where it seems seated for you. Nicely. I usually like pump a little bit, meaning that I breathe in. And when I breathe out, I try to go a little farther. I don't know if it works for you, it does work for me, so try doing that. Uh, but yoga is a journey I keep telling, so you know, the goal is not to reach the ground at all, the goal is just to open your chest, keep your back straight, as if you know, your page of a book, you're closing that book. Come out. Let's come to Sukta Balakanasana. You can just start here. And then like a butterfly, open your wings up. You can recline if you want. These are all reclines, if you do it right, are good for your pelvic health. These pelvic tilts. So this is good for lower back. All right. I know today might feel a little slow, but you know, we're working on our back. It's like, we can't do it with coming in and out of pose snappily. So we have to take our time. Um, Come to Janusirsasana and then fold on top of your extended leg. Come out. Janu on the other side.
come back. All right. Uh, we will do middle floor where we'll introduce back bends for our you know back focus yoga today. So come to down dog, right leg up, right leg forward. Come to warrior one. Warrior two. And then come to reverse warrior. Today the focus in, is on reverse warrior. Keep your front leg committed and then have a add a nice back bend. Straighten both of your legs out. And then this with this tilt, you see how uh, my hips are tilting towards the back to get an extension forward to come to a triangle. And then open your chest up, face the sky. Come to a bound triangle. Come back to plank. Down dog. Left leg up. Left leg forward. Warrior one. Warrior two. Reverse your warrior. Keep the same commitment in your front leg. Don't come out of your lunge. Look at the sky if you can. Then triangle. Tilt your leg from neutral, tilting back sideways. Reach, reach. When you can't reach anymore, come down, open your chest, triangle or bound triangle. Opening your chest up to the sky. Nice. Now face forward. Leading with your chest. We are gonna come to a fourth fold. Let your head hang. Prasarita Padmatasana. Lift yourself up. Tuck the left hand to the ground. Open up. You can make it a bind if you want, or just stay here, look up. Touch right hand on the ground, look up. Come to a side lunge. Side lunge on the other side. All right, we're back to seated postures now. I was thinking to do double pigeon, but let's actually do a normal pigeon flow. So come to down dog again. Right leg up. Right leg forward. Come to seated pigeon. You don't need to bring your legs parallel for this. Seated pigeon. Um, to seated bound pigeon. You can stay here. Uh, this doesn't do too much for our back, but full cobra does. Uh, sorry, not full cobra. Full pigeon does or king pigeon. So I'm going to try to go to king pigeon. It is a little bit difficult. Um, but I do want you guys to see if you want to try. So, you know, I hold my big toe and then shift my weight to face forward. And open my chest. And let the leg go gently. Knees are pretty loaded, so you need to be careful. 
Now bringing the shin parallel to the mat and then come to a recline. Come out to a down dog. Left leg up. Left leg forward. To come to a seated pigeon. To a bound pigeon. Don't let your hips hike up. Hips should still face the ground. Keep a nice bound or bind. If you want to try king pigeon, you can try it. So I usually do it this way. By holding my big toe, rotating my body forward. And let go. Now bringing the shin parallel to the mat, recline. Nice gentle breath. Come out. Come to a spinal twist. You can just leverage. This is also all this nice twist are good for your back, also spinal twist. Opening your chest up. Go look behind you. Come face forward, change your legs up, do the rotation on this other side. This feels nice. Come back to center. We've actually done bridges already, so Today we are just going to go straight to Savasana. If there's one last pose you want to do, you're craving for it, go for it. Otherwise, come to this resting pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let's take ourselves out of your body, out of our bodies. Watch yourself from the corner of your eyes something bothering you. Let that thought go. Can you just focus on your breath? Where is this breath going? Can you breathe into your hips? Is it deep, so deep the breath that you can feel it flowing through your entire body? Don't you feel it's very peaceful? Are your palms open and relaxing? How are your legs? Are your feet relaxing? Let your belly relax. Your chest relax. Don't hold your tongue. Don't squint your eyes. Everything's just in absolute relaxation. Now come to your favorite side in a fetal pose. I pick my right side. You can pick either side. Breathe in. Breathe out. Now just like waking up from a slumber, get up to a comfortable seated position. Thank you for joining me today. I had a lot of fun. And I wanted to give you a little motivational ending today. Um, I, I think I've mentioned before I have a little baby boy and he sleeps with me at night sometimes and the days he does sleep with me he actually sleeps on my arms and I wake up with sometimes like horrible shoulder pain out of that or sometimes back pain but you know it, it doesn't last because you know I, I make sure I do yoga every day 
and um, once I do all these deep stretches my pain just goes away so you know if you're su suffering from any chronic pain in your body shoulder back head neck uh, give yoga a shot it won't disappoint you and also give me some shout out of your problem areas I can focus on that and show you some special poses that could be good so with that note thank you for joining me see you in the next class